Phil. My mom is a belligerent, sloppy drunk. She loves drama and attention. <gasps> when it gets really bad, I get angry, then I twitch. She's making herself do that. You think she put on a show for me? Stop it. Stop. Mm, this Hollywood, you're going to have to do better than that. You're shaking and hitting yourself? How is that real, Mom? I shot your hands while we were watching the tape. I don't see any tremor. You're seeing through me, I get it. I was in a national beauty pageant. You went out with the pageant moms and you got wasted. She got to spend her special night cleaning up your vomit. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. I hate and am disgusted by my mother. Harsh words from a daughter, right? Well, Kristen insists they are justified because she claims her mother, Marna, is a pathological liar who's gone as far as pretending she works at a hospital as a phlebotomist and is faking cancer. Kristen says there is no low her felon mom won't seek to in order to create drama and get all eyes on her. But before I can even get to her list of reported lies, Kristen says there's even a bigger problem. Her mother is a sloppy drunk who showed up wasted at her prom, passed out at her pageant, and basically ruined her childhood with her alcoholic antics. Take a look. My mom is a belligerent, sloppy drunk who is completely destroying her life. I'm gonna have another one. My mom spends all day, every day drinking. <sighs> yep, uh, it'll be fine after this. When my mom is drinking, she is super happy and bubbly and thinks her life is perfect. <laughs> or she is completely wasted and angry at everybody. Do it. Does anyone know how bad it hurts? My mom is so obnoxious when she drinks. I didn't sign up for this. She loves drama and attention, and the more she drinks, the more that that comes out. I've had enough to drink. My hands are shaking. It's crazy. I don't get it. She's crazy. When my mom attends family functions, we never really know what's going to happen because a majority of the time she'll show up drunk. One Christmas, my in-laws were having a get together and my mom showed up completely wasted and fell out of the car and I ended up telling her to just leave. My mom has shown up drunk to my kids' birthday parties. My mom would have a pint of vodka in her purse and sneak off to the bathroom and drink. Throughout the evening, she was getting more and more intoxicated. When it comes to my mom's drinking, nothing is sacred. When several of my children were born, she would show up to the hospital and I could tell that she had been drinking. It was supposed to be our time and she basically put the spotlight on herself. I have completely blocked my mom from my life because of her drinking. My mom has completely gone out of control. It just keeps getting worse day by day. It just needs to stop. Okay, you're sick of this. Mm -hmm. I'm angry and hurt. You don't trust why she's coming here, do you? Nope. You think she's coming here because she, everything is melodramatic with her. Mm -hmm. You think this is the biggest stage she's ever had and she's gonna come out here and put on the biggest show of her life. Or it's either gonna be one of two things, either she's gonna put on a show or she's gonna sit here and cry and throw a pity party, because that's what she does. Before we meet Marna, she allowed us to spend the afternoon with her. Take a look. I've been a chronic alcoholic forever. I drink to forget. I drink to just not feel anymore. 
I wake up in the morning, my first thing is, is I look in the fridge or the hiding places to make sure that I have alcohol. And then if I can't find them, then I panic. I drink one of these a day, plus whatever I can find that I forget that I stash somewhere. And that happens a lot. Liquor store's right over there. Show me your hand. Did you always shake like that? Yeah. All the time? It's only, no. It's because I haven't had enough. It'll calm down after this one, I think. I think I made it well. <laughs> like when it gets really bad, I get ang angry, then I twitch. Stop it. Stop. Stop. <laughs> do you drink to fall asleep? Absolutely. How much do you drink to fall asleep? Until I pass out. Okay. Okay, it's fine. Alcohol is my sedative. Okay, it's fine. It's okay. It's okay. My biggest fear is that I'm gonna die. I will go and wake up and not remember what day it is. <gasps> oh. 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 <laughs> what happened? I think I stopped breathing for a second. I don't know. When I black out, there's moments that I feel like I did something. <sighs> it's scary. So when I black out, I just, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna have another one. Is that okay? Putting on a show. Okay. You think she put on a show for me? The twitching and like hitting herself in her face and the shaking of her hands, you can tell that she's not really shaking. She's making herself do that. And that's the crap she does when she drinks. Sadly, none of this surprises her daughter, Kristen. She says at this point, embarrassment and disappointment are the only adjectives she has to describe her mother. Because of my mom's drinking, she has completely ruined a lot of great moments that have gone on in my childhood. When I was in sixth grade, I was in a national preteen beauty pageant in Florida. She was crowned um, Miss Teen South Dakota. Could because she's so cute. The first night that we were there, all the pageant moms went out to dinner. Later that night, I heard a knock on the door and the pageant moms were carrying my mom into the bedroom and just laid her on the bed. I spent the night cleaning up her vomit. That was one of the great times that I remember in Florida. I was trying to better myself and my education and she basically took that away from me. One night, her friends had called me and said that they were at a restaurant and I needed to go pick my mom up because she was passed out in the booth. I ended up getting there and she was passed out and people had to help me carry her to my vehicle. When we got home, I was trying to carry her up the front porch and she ended up falling and peeing all over the place. And I let her just pass out on the floor. It was crazy. When I was at my junior prom, we were all in the middle of taking pictures and my mom showed up drunk. I couldn't believe it was happening. I was super upset. My friends had these outstanding mothers, and I had one that was kind of a tone drunk. I'm a mom of four kids, and I'm also having to mother her. It's not fair, and I completely resent it. Well, Marna hasn't seen her daughter in three months, so let's bring her out. Marty, Dr. Phil. Nice to meet you. How are you? Have a seat right here. Okay. Uh, how are you doing this morning? Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you drunk? No. Mm -hmm. Have you been drinking? No. When was the last dr drink you had? I had two beers yesterday. Two beers yesterday? Yep. The two 20 ounce beers. Two 20 ounce beers yesterday? Yeah. That's all you had yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Because I knew it was coming here. So you'll drink a, a liter of whiskey a day, a, a big bottle a day, and then like five shots at night when you go to bed? Right. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, why? To forget, um, to calm the anxiety. How forthright have you been with us so far from the beginning? 
I feel that I've been very honest. She's putting on a freaking show. I'm so sick of it. Stop being so damn dramatic. I don't understand why you think I'm being dramatic. Mom, everything you do is dramatic. Did you see those videos? Yes, I saw them. You're shaking and hitting yourself? Really? Stop doing all of this crap. Get your crap together so you can be a part of my life, even if that's possible, because right now it's not. Are there large gaps in your memory? Huge. In fact, the other day, I thought it was Wednesday, and all of a sudden, it was Thursday. I tried to, like, do the timeline with, okay, I went to the store, I drove this, I was driving sober. If you're always drunk, how are you driving sober? On a wing and a purr. Because you're probably Stupid. drunk, right? Yep. I would do anything right now if I could just turn a switch. And, and not be afraid and not wonder how I'm going to get through the day. I don't like what I saw. Well, here's there. how you turn a switch. Let me tell you how you turn a switch. You can't change what has happened. You really can't. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is you can make choices in the moment. Because your brain is working well enough to know the difference between right and wrong. Are you telling me that you don't know the difference between right and wrong? I do know the difference between right and wrong. So if you were standing in front of a store right now, if you were standing in front of a 7-Eleven right now, uh -huh. and you needed money, uh -huh. and there was an ATM there, or there was a door to the store, and you thought, well, okay, I can either go to the ATM and get money out of that, or I can go in and rob the clerk. Uh -huh. Are you telling me you don't know the difference between it's okay to get money out of the ATM. It's not okay to go rob the clerk. Do you know the difference between the two? Yes, I do. Okay, then you're not insane. Yes. Which is wrong, ATM or robbing the clerk? Robbing the clerk. Okay, so you know the difference between right and wrong. Yes. Do you know the difference between the truth and a lie? Yes, I, yeah. You said on the tape, oh, thinking back about that pageant, she was so cute. That's one of my fondest memories. Mm -hmm. Did, did you hear her memory of that? I did. What was her memory of that? Having a mom there. And embarrassment. Um, humiliation. What was her memory of that? Tell her your memory of that again in case she forgot. Uh, the first night when we were there and you went out with all those moms. And you came back to the room wasted. And they had to carry you in there. She didn't come back to the room. They carried her back, back to the room. room. You went out with all of her friends' mothers, the mm -hmm. other contestants, and they had to carry you back to the room, whereupon you vomited all over everything. So your daughter, on a night where she was the center of attention, you became the center of attention because you went out and made a horse's ass out of yourself, and then you came back and vomited all over the room. So she got to spend her special night cleaning up your vomit. And then you sat there on the tape and said, mm -hmm. oh, this is such a great memory. I remember the memories. I remember the pictures. I remember, like, the final two nights. I remember the final night of the pageant. I you cannot be that selfish and narcissistic. I don't care how drunk your brain is. You cannot be that selfish and narcissistic that you are going to completely disregard oh, what she not. just said. Oh, absolutely not. Tell me what she just said. She, she, embarrassment, humiliation, jealous of the other girls because their moms were there and supporting them. That's not what I said. Well, that's the way I... Unless I didn't say any of that. Tell her what you said. I said that you came in, or we, you went out that night with the pageant moms, and you got mm -hmm. wasted, and they carried you back into the room, and I had to pick up your puke. Mm -hmm. That ruined my night, my moment that I was supposed to have. I'd never done anything fun like that, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. I'm a middle schooler, mm -hmm. just becoming a teenager, mm -hmm. and that's the crap that you do. And she said you took that moment away from her. Mm -hmm. I did. You took it away from her. Uh -huh. But yet you sat there on tape and said, oh, it was such a funny, because she's so cute. You took that moment away from her. I did. I wish I could do it over, and I can't. So I don't. Hmm. 
Well, I have some observations here, but let's take a break. Next, Kristen says growing up, she was an easy target for bullies at school because Marna was a convicted felon sitting in prison and everyone knew it. So she's a drunk, she's a felon. So why was she there? And is she being honest with us? She said, since this whole process began, and she started dealing with our producers, that everything has been straight up. We're gonna talk about all of that after the break, because you know what? It's time to get real. My mom is very untrustworthy. My mom was recently fired from a volunteer organization. My mom told me that she was sick of working there and just wanted to find a new job. I rarely believe anything that my mom says anymore, and I definitely didn't believe this. Not only was she fired, but I've heard that she was stealing money from people at that facility and is under investigation. This is extremely shameful on her part and is super embarrassing for her too. Kristen says the ultimate letdown occurred when she was just nine years old. When I was in third grade, my mom was sent to prison. My mom was arrested for embezzling hundreds of thousands of dollars from a travel agency that she was working at. I will never forget the day that I found out my mom was going to prison. I came home from school and my dad and my grandparents were there too. My dad brought me to the bedroom, sat me down, and he started crying and told me that my mom was going to jail. This experience was extremely traumatizing to me. Instead of having a normal Christmas like most families, we spent it at prison. While we were there, we had attended a Christmas program, but instead of it being fun and happy, it was kind of a really sad moment for me. Not having my mom around for over a year was extremely hard. Being so young, I was hoping that nobody would find out that she was in prison. But I had people making fun of me at school. I was completely embarrassed. To this day, my mom hasn't talked about being in prison and actually jokes about it. She's never apologized to me for it. Before my mom went to prison, I thought she was perfect and great, but ever since then, I've never looked at her the same way. So what were you in prison for? Embezzlement. Mm -hmm. I was, I managed a travel agency and I, misused their corporate credit card for my own personal travel and for family travel. And in retrospect, it was I would lie to my family and tell them that it was a certain, like a comp trip, and that, or I won it. In actuality, it was used a company credit card for the expenses. Okay, so in April 1st, 1998, 29 uh -huh. counts of felony, fourth degree, grand theft over $500. Convicted of four counts, sentenced to five years, served mm -hmm. one year, mm -hmm. ordered to pay $59,179.70 in restitution. She thinks you're not being honest with this. I wanted to take a look at this video of your um, behavior during the field shoot. Okay, stop this. Okay, wh what's going on there? Um, just tell the truth. I'm, it, a lot of Faking it. I, I, How is that real, Mom? I believe, I've never seen you do that before. Stop. I'm not. I, go, I don't know how anyone could fake that. Okay, let's go forward. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Stop. Okay, what's going on here? I don't remember doing that. I'm but sorry? I said, I don't remember doing that, but to me that seems a little extreme and maybe a little, I'm gonna be honest, for show, maybe. That's embarrassing. It is very embarrassing. So why would that, that's not a very good show, Mom. No, it's not. It's attention-seeking behavior and for me to probably have people wanna feel sorry for me. Okay, well, let's look at your hands here. Okay. What was going on here? Um, I would say 90% of it, again, self-seeking attention. It's interestingly enough, I, I shot your hands while we were watching the prison tape. Uh -huh. While we were all watching the prison tape, mm -hmm. I, close, I had a close-up mm -hmm. of your hands. Mm -hmm. I shot them for 30 seconds. I don't see any tremor. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, Miss Hollywood, you're gonna have to do better than that. You've seen through me, I get it. And so has Kristen. And so is probably a lot of other people that I'm not aware of. So it sounds to me that your daughter's right. You're full of Why did you lose your job at the volunteer place? I was being investigated um, for misappropriation of funds. This is a volunteer organization where you're helping... Yes, sir. ...the, the disadvantaged population, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what else is Martin lying about? We're going to find out after the break. If there's pills in the house, I steal them. My fiance had surgery. I took them. When we're invited to people's homes for parties, I actually go into their... I go into their closets. And I see what they have, and then they take them. I don't actually trust myself in anyone's home right now because that's my motivation. They're having like a dinner party or whatever. My main focus is to go in the bathroom and just dig around and see what they have for pills. And then I steal them. Well, Marta admits to mixing prescription pills into her self-destruction cocktail. She, Kristen also adds pathological liar to the laundry list of Marna's destructive behaviors. My mom is a pathological liar and you cannot trust anything that comes out of her mouth. She constantly lies about things that sane people don't lie about. My mom insists she is a phlebotomist at a hospital. I knew it was a lie so I called the clinic and the receptionist said that there was no one by that name that worked there. Oh. <laughs> Snap, crackle, pop. I'm sick of my body snapping. It hurts. She has a history of telling people that she has cancer, not just one type of cancer, but many different types of cancer. My mom has told me that she has had breast cancer, lung cancer, thyroid cancer, and melanoma. When I ask my mom about all of these cancers, she instantly gets upset. Her stories change, her appointments change, her doctors change, none of it is true. It makes me extremely upset when there's people out there who actually have cancer. Right on. I think that her fiance Mark is completely oblivious to anything that's going on. I don't think that she told him when they had first started dating that she was an alcoholic. And I don't think that he knows that she has ever been in prison. I love you so much. I love you, babe. That's completely unfair to him and all of her other ex-boyfriends. My mom is 100% lying about everything, and she needs to come clean. Thank you for being here. <laughs> you two have been in a relationship how long? Three years. Three years? Uh -huh. um, and how's it going? So pretty rough right now. Mm -hmm. uh, What's rough right now? Well, I, I've worked on the road for a year and a half, being gone. It's never great. Leave Monday, come back Friday. Yeah. Uh, so that's difficult. Have, have you been forthcoming with him? No. I have not. Do you know that she's been to prison? Yes. And that's for embezzlement? Yeah. A lot of money? Yes. Do you know that she has DUIs? No, I didn't know. On April 3rd, 2008, uh, okay. first degree, driving under the influence. Uh -huh. uh, May 9th, 96, yep. first degree, driving under the influence. Uh -huh. She was incarcerated for 60 days for that one. Uh, in 95, first degree, driving under the influence. She was incarcerated for 30 days uh -huh. for that one. She's currently under investigation for embezzling again. I did not know that. No, nope, he didn't. Can I look at him for a second? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. All right. Yes, baby? <clears throat> I have been lying to you. You know, I suspected that. Don't know what. 
but yes. I've been lying. As far as being employed, I've been lying to you. And then I pretend I have that backpack mm -hmm. that I tell you it's my work bag. It's not my work bag. It's just stuff filled with stuff to think that you think that I'm working and I'm not. Okay. Another thing I need to tell you. You know that we're missing some things in the apartment. I figured you were involved. Involved in what? I would tell him that I, I, I didn't have direct deposit because of whatever reason I made up and that I would, I would have to get paper checks from work and then I'd have to go to the bank and then cash the paper checks, which was that, that was not the instance. So that way when he would come home on the weekends, I would have cash. But what I did is I slowly started pawning Julia items of my own first and then I was running out of money. So then I would randomly go into his jewelry box and every so often I would take certain valuable jewelry items of his and go to different pawn shops and, and pawn them for cash. And then there were certain ones that I knew were really, really special to him, so I would just leave that be. And then it got to the point where's that, that one on the top? Mm -hmm. It was the last one. And I took that one and that was the last item that we had in the house of any value. And I knew that one was really special to him, but I, it, I didn't care because I was, I knew he was coming home and I, I, I knew that I had to somehow have the cash to maybe prove that I was working. So you robbed him? Yeah, I did. You robbed him and- She pawned some of our stuff. And, uh, and pawned keepsakes from his- I did. Parents. And yeah. And his father's wedding ring, who was passed away. How do you feel about that? I'd come to the conclusion three weeks ago. Why didn't you say that? That wasn't what I asked you. I, I'm here to support her. I love her. She needs help. Um, I'd come to the conclusion that this had probably happened. I didn't know it. I would tried to drop a couple comments for her to tell me but she stuck to the story. I remember the one comment that you told me as we were going to lay in bed and, and you sat up and looked at me and you said, you know, whoever's gonna do this, they need to go in and just say they're guilty. So how do you feel about it? I'm, I'm angry about it, but anger can be gotten over. It's the trust with her that I don't wanna lose. This. Do you realize what I did to you? Yeah, I do. But guess what? No, there's no but. You don't understand if somebody did that to me. I don't understand. You've, you've been telling me for so very long the dark spot that you're you in. Oh. If you really love her. I do. <laughs> then you need to let her know that she better straighten her ass up or hit the bricks. Because let me tell you something, if you enable this behavior, you are crippling her the same as if you held her down and poured alcohol in her mouth. You cannot help her by excusing self-destructive behavior. I want her to get the help, I will help support that, but she needs to shape up. Marta says she started drinking at 15 years old to cope with the demons of her childhood. We're gonna talk about that after the break. I've asked someone to join us uh, on stage here. Uh, my very good friend, a good friend of the show, this is T.J. Howard. Uh, TJ is the corporate director for Origins Behavioral Healthcare. I believe Origins Behavioral Healthcare are the nation's leading dual diagnosis treatment center. I, I want to tell you something that I think is going on here with your mother. Everybody's got a story. You know, you, you were adopted, right? It bothers you that your bio mother has never 
found you. You don't know whether she's looked for you or whether she hasn't. I don't, you know, who knows? But, you know, everybody's got a story. And when you see people that have an addiction, um, I, I'm one of those people that believes that these things almost never occur in a vacuum. They almost always occur in what I call a, a comorbid situation where they happen embedded with, parallel with certain other things. And if you go in and you treat just the addiction, if you get somebody dried out, you get them off drugs, you get whatever, but you don't deal with their psychological issues, then those psychological issues will cripple them and they will self-medicate and start going right back to what they were doing to begin with. And that's the basis for you guys doing a dual diagnosis intervention, correct? Correct, correct. You have to, you have to treat both par parallel because if you treat one and not the other, then this one inflames. And if you treat this one and not that one, then that one inflames. And either which way, it's a bad situation. You are right to protect yourself and your children from this woman in this, at this level of adjustment. She is toxic and she is dangerous. Her judgment is impaired. If you think she wouldn't put your children in a car and drive drunk, you are wrong. She damn sure would. And she would be so sorry when they pulled one of their dead bodies out of that car. She would feel terrible about it and she would get drunk to drown her sorrows. But your child would be nonetheless dead. Protect yourself, protect your children. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to get yourself straightened up. That's why Mr. Howard is here. Do you want this opportunity? Yeah. If she doesn't lean into this program, I want to know it. Absolutely. And I want you to kick her ass to the curb. Yes, sir. You got one shot. Yeah. And you need to lean into this. Okay? Okay? All right. Well, a couple of months ago, we met Debbie, a divorced mom whose daughter wanted to help her find love again. But Debbie felt she needed, well, she needed a little boost. So I got the booster right here. My wife, Robin, stepped in to get Debbie ready to step out on the town. Here's a look at when we first met Debbie. I'm 58 years old, and I am a mother personal trainer and health coach. I'm divorced. I want to look my best because I'm single. Over the years, I've noticed that my skin has started to lose its elasticity, wrinkle, and discolor. I know somebody who knows about beauty on the inside and the outside. So please welcome the founder and creator of Robin McGraw Revelation Luxury Skincare Collection, my wife, Robin McGraw. We all want to look our very best. We are giving you all 14 products in the luxury line. Thank you. Thank you. So, how is Betty doing with both her skin regimen and her social life? Let's check in with her and find out. I was so happy the last time I was here to meet Robin because she gave me these products that have given me confidence. I always say it's never too late to start taking care of your skin, and I believe it's never too early. I really had a lot of concerns about aging in the dating scene, and as I approach 60, things go down. And so I was thinking, what am I gonna do for skin care that will keep me from surgery? And then Robin came along. 
My biggest problem was sagging skin, like the fine lines that are under my eyes and my neck. Now that I'm using Robin's products, my skin just looks more radiant. I notice that my fine lines are diminishing and they're less noticeable. Before using the skincare products, I might have been a little hesitant about socializing and going out and feeling youthful. But in the last couple of months, people have come up to me and they tell me that I look a lot younger than my age. I've been complimented by men, so I'm feeling a lot more confident. on the outside, I really believe you feel good on the inside. Don't you agree? Absolutely, Robin. I've been using these products both day and night. I use all the products in the com different combinations, and I really, really feel a difference, and I, I just appreciate it that you gave them to me. The Foaming Joy is absolutely the best. I use it twice a day, morning and night. <laughs> I love hearing that. See this right here? <laughs> test lab for every gotcha. one of these products <laughs> so what the foaming joy tell everybody what that one is i'm so glad to hear that that is your favorite it's the number one product it's the first one in all 14 and it's the cleanser so you must use that first and i love that you use it twice a day so you use it in the morning and the evening oh, well let's take a look at the before and after pictures and see how debbie's look has improved oh wow <laughs> Dang. Uh, That's great. Yeah. You, now, you got to feel good about that. Uh, I do. Yeah, I, well, you absolutely. should. <laughs> yeah, you definitely it's should. Beautiful. We also have Tomiko here, who today has been using Robin's products for about a month and loves the results. Yes, let's take a look at her before and after pictures. Oh, oh wow. wow. So, Tobago, what's been your experience? I live in Arizona where the climate is dry, and I noticed that her products keep my, my um, skin really hydrated. Um, and I love, I love the Foaming Joy. It is it's wonderful. I use it twice a day with some of the other products, um, like Deb as well. And um, the Foaming Joy is so, it's so good, even my two daughters try to steal it from me. <laughs> they do. <laughs> we can't have that. Debbie and Tomiko, because you both love Foaming Joy, I put together a perfect complement of products in a set I call Good Morning Sunshine. They are the best way to start your day. First, there's Foaming Joy, then a serum called Vita Boost, and finally, 50 Fierce, a potent moisturizer and SPF 50 sunscreen. And because Robin wants everybody here to look and feel as good as Debbie and Tomiko, everybody in the audience is getting their own Good Morning Sunshine set. If you'd like to get any or all of Robin's luxury skincare collection, log on to RobinMcGrawRevelation.com. RobinMcGrawRevelation.com. We'll see you next time.